so we're gonna have to kick it. This is where I pause the video and come back after I've successfully kicked it off. Okay, today we're gonna do back brakes on a 2011 Kia Soul. Already did the front brake. The front brakes, doing the backs today. And first things, make sure everything's safe. So what I did is I put a block of wood in front of each tire to keep it from rolling. There's a slight incline going down. Not super duper, but it is a slight. <clears throat> and um, it's in gear. Manual shift, so it's in gear. So that also help keeping the tires from going forward. Because remember that rear brake, the handbrake here is for these. Anyway, um, the handbrake operates through the rear wheels, so when it comes time to take the rotors off, you're going to have to undo the handbrake because it's a drum also. So you, it's a combination drum and it's a combination drum and disc. So here are the supplies that I'm going to be using today. We got the Bosch brakes, brake pads. We have um, Stop Tech rotors, which are pretty up there quality. Nice. Let's see how it's uh, the drum inside and also a disc. All right. We got a nice big breaker bar for leverage. And I'm going to use that for the tires and uh, maybe the caliper bracket bolts if they're stubborn. I get the mini breaker bar, and this is adjustable. And they also flex both of these at top, nice. I have the 21 uh, millimeter uh, socket for the lug nuts on the tire. And I have the 14 millimeter for the caliper bolts and the caliper bracket bolts. It's a little, little different than the front. The front caliper brackets are 17 millimeter to get the bracket off. Um, but on the back brakes, they're both 14. So there we go. And we're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver to, um, to take the two screws out that hold the, um, the rotor on. And uh, some sort of penetrating oil or maybe WD-40. This is especially necessary if it's been quite a while since uh, the brakes have been done because the rotors can be a real, real pain in the butt to get off. And uh, as was the front, if you saw my previous video, by the way, I have another video on how to do the front brakes coming up. Um, so we're gonna get started with jacking the vehicle up. Now, I have two jack stands and um, these just hold the vehicle. This is for extra safety and uh, Basically, we're gonna jack up the car right over here, right here. And we're gonna put this jack right in the middle of this little fin coming down. Yeah, it doesn't look that strong, but it'll hold. And you know, it sometimes these things could bend, but um, still, this is the frame underneath here. So we're gonna jack it up, put the jack stand underneath, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side so I have both wheels off. And I'm also gonna take this wheel off and slide it underneath for a little extra protection. So um, let's get started. So I'm gonna put this in position. You can see a couple of slots that give you an idea where you should basically get anywhere along this line. You wanna get decently close to the, uh, the back end of the car. And then we're gonna start pumping up. Now, what I do is usually I'll get the jack ready. I'll pump it up a little bit, not all the way, and then I'll unloosen the lug nuts. 
because uh, otherwise the tire could spin and um, so that's a little trick and then once they're loosened up I jack it up all the way and finish taking the lug nuts off so let's get started okay get the breaker bar ready Lucy You got a break of bar, it's going to be a piece of cake. Lots of leverage. You, know, you just want to get them loose. And actually, I forgot, you know, if the brakes is on, we shouldn't have a problem with the wheel spinning that easy. And once we get this off, we're going to take the brakes off. Emergency brake. Okay, so that's all loose. And then we're gonna jack up the car. Sometimes there'll be a little give and the car might roll a little forward. Make sure it's in gear. I see this is still wanting to go forward a bit. And then uh, Bring the jack up as far as it can go. Make sure it's locked good. And then we're gonna finish taking the nuts off. What's nice about this with the swivel is you actually can just bend it all the way and use it. It's like a uh, lug wrench. I'm gonna bang this. Get the off. Later on, so. There we go. Put the lug nuts where you won't lose them. As we put it inside the cup cap. Tie the pole tire. Okay, yeah, it's on tight. So we're gonna have to kick it. This is where I pause the video and come back after I've successfully kicked it off. So we're gonna have to do some kicking as you see in Okay, and gonna slide this under the car for a little extra protection. Safety. I've been doing that most of my life, and then I'll actually put a few pieces of wood there. So now we got the jack and this, because I'm going to uh, take this jack away and jack up the other side of the car. All right, so now the car is being supported on the jack stand. And we have the tire with the wood for safety. I'm gonna just uh, do the same for the other side and then I'll come back and we'll film this. And that looks actually pretty nasty. Whoa, look at that. This is all pitted and rusty and this is the reason why it didn't pass inspection definitely don't blame the guys but um what's leading me to do my own um brakes is they wanted eleven hundred dollars to do brakes for the front and back anyway and also being that the fronts were really hard to get off i'm going to take some penetrating oil and just put it all around here because that's what's going to slide off this looks like it's almost welded on i'm probably gonna have to bang this a bit Remember to take out the Phillips head screws right here, also. Okay, we're gonna use this socket instead. Uh, 
and uh, the caliper actually there's two pins all right one here one there so we're gonna break those loose We're gonna take this caliper off and we're gonna hang it somewhere around here. We wanna keep it away from the way we're working on the caliper brackets here so we can get the wrench in there. So we're gonna pull this out. You'll notice that this is a lot smaller than the front caliper. Uh, we're gonna have to compress this back in remember to open up the cap on your brake reservoir so we'll show you momentarily in the meantime get a wire so we can hang this out of the way so there's no stress on the hose i'm gonna put it around these emission pipes or actually I could just put it around this little nut okay so out of the way and all right so next we have the caliber bracket let's look at these brakes they look scary What we can do is um, take the caliper brackets off, which takes this whole assembly out, and then we can knock the pads out. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna use the big breaker bar. All right, this big mama. And um, show you with the other camera. Okay. So here are the caliper bracket bolts, okay? Same size. Um, everything here looks kind of rusty, so I'm gonna use the big breaker bar. You may not need to, but uh, I'm gonna start with it so I'm not messing around. In the meantime, I've been having a problem getting this tire off, so I, I put some oil around the hub. Same thing for the tire. In addition to getting the rotor off, sometimes it gets stuck on. So I put some oil on, let that sit while I'm working on the other side. Okay, got some amazing leverage here. We're gonna get that on. And, okay. Not bad, and it has great leverage. All right, so it's loose already. Let's see if I can spin it the rest of the way with that hand and no I use the smaller breaker bar and I'll uh, collapse this we don't need all levers so I'll make it small so I can do this quicker Alright, so this is the caliber bracket bolt. It has a uh, separate washer. Don't lose it. And uh, so we're going to do the bottom one now. Let's see if I can do it with the uh, small breaker bar. Take some 
pressure off the bolt. Okay, oh, here comes the bracket. Oh my goodness, wow. And right, so the pads and the clips. The pads are still in there, we gotta knock them out. We shouldn't have to knock them out. Boy, this is way, way overdue. Oh my goodness, horrible looking. All right, we gotta get this baby off. We're gonna bang that with a hammer to see if we can knock that loose. Again, remember to take the brakes off. Of course, you want the fronts blocked well and in gear with its front wheel drive. And remember to take off the retaining screws before you knock this off. Okay, and we're gonna bang the pads out of this. This is almost screaming like, get me a new bracket, right? Now, whenever you're banging metal to metal too, even this, but when I start banging that, the wear goggles. Wow, well, I just never have to spend this much energy to knock pads out. It's kind of like a false sense of security when you go to a, a brake place and they put on lifetime pads and you think like you never have to replace them and you push it to the limit and this is what happens. Looks like there is a little bit of material there, but boy, did this rust. Wow. They're out. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the slide guides that I hope I can get them off first. That popped off. What I'm gonna do is take a steel brush brush this so when I put the new clips on they'll go on better because if they don't go on all the way the pads won't slide properly I'm curious about how much a new bracket would cost but uh, I think this we should get away with it it's gonna be time to start banging that time to start banging that rotor we want to get that baby off Put on some safety glasses and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna put these on. I'm gonna start banging away with a hammer. Hopefully, get it off. Now would spin it a bit so you can bang different areas. Okay, so that's the inside. This is the drum. Rotor again. These are the disc brakes. Not brakes, these are brake shoes. They shouldn't wear because you're just using this to apply a parking brake. It's not like these are being used to stop to the vehicle. Unless you were using your handbrake all the time like an emergency. Because your brakes are bad. So this should be fine. And um... So what I'm gonna do is wipe this down as much as I can, grease this up. Um, so the next time I do brakes or someone else I sell this to, it'll make their life easier. Even the mechanic who does this. All right, let's check out the pads. All right, we have the new clips. They give us a free bag. sensors here and grease and the 
grease is gonna go after we put these clips on the grease is gonna go here so the pads will slide back and forth with ease hopefully and then uh, got some extra brake fluid just in case we got brake clean super duper poisonous so I recommend wearing a VOC mask and we're gonna use that to wipe down this rotor which appears to have some sort of paint overspray on it that is odd why is that so I'm gonna wipe it down I'm gonna spray a little bit of this brake cleaner spray on a rag and wipe this down just a, just uh, on this side that side I don't think you need to do it on this because you're not using your handbrake to stop the car so once it, the car stopped the brakes will just press against this so I guess this is some sort of anti-corrosion. Okay, let's slide the rotor on, make sure the mounting screws line up. Hopefully this will slide on with no problem. There was a little problem. Then take the Mounting screws, get them ready, screw this on, and that just keeps this from flopping around when you're messing around with everything else. Just make sure it's seated good, press on this, and then uh, tighten it. Basically, what really keeping this rotor on is when you bolt the tire on and it's the tire rim is pressed against this, that's what keeps the rotor on. These just keep it from flopping around while you do work on it. I would do this by hand. I wouldn't use an impact gun on this. Okay. Nice, firm, tight. Looks like these are pretty good condition. They're not rusted, so I don't think I really need to uh, wash them down with oil. Alright, nice free spin. Uh, I'm going to take the plug out of the old rotor I think we can put it in there. I think that might be a little access hole to, uh, to, us, to actually, that's probably the hole to adjust the brake. Yep. To spin this around, there's got to be a special tool, maybe even using a little screwdriver. I'm not going to mess with it, but that's probably it. Um, there you go. So I'm going to clean up this a bit with a wire brush and then we'll get back to uh, putting the new clips on and then assembling it. Okay, I'm going to put these back on. Why? Because I'm going to get rid of some of that um, yucky material. So remember, we're going to put these um, little plates on each side, but it's kind of yucky here. So what we want to do, both sides, let's just get rid of some of that yuck. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of like clean some of that up. Good idea to wear a mask when you're doing this too. I'll we'll get back to it. Okay, so we did one side. It's a lot cleaner. That's the undone side. And um, you can use a, a hand wire brush if you want. This just makes it go faster. And just watch you don't hit this when it's spinning. Even when it's not spinning, um, can cut you. So just be careful when you're using this. Probably a good idea to wear gloves also. All right, hopefully you got some uh, high temperature synthetic brake lubricant in your brake package. This is Bosch, so they usually include it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little, put it on my finger, and 
go over the brackets. You don't want to glob it on too much. Um, there we go. Sorry, I was out of frame. You're going to put this on the slide brackets. You don't want to glob it on too much because uh, you don't want it to get it on the brake material when you put the pads on and you're messing around with this. So I'll just lightly coat that. These are all the areas that the brake pads are going to hit. Flip it over, do it the same this time. Okay. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put the caliber bracket on first, then throw the pads on, then the caliber. Because um, they'll keep flopping and falling out as I try and get it on. So uh, let's mount this now. Okay, so we're going to slide the caliber bracket on bolt it and uh, so we're gonna get ready to rock and roll okay so it's gonna go on just like this okay and we're gonna put the bolts right in here okay tighten them up nice and tight probably about 40 to 60 foot pounds I'll double check on that Oh yeah, by the way, it has two different sized bolts for the caliper bracket, not the caliper. That's the caliper right here. Caliper bracket is, the long one goes on top. That's set. Don't super tighten it until you get them both in so you have a little flexibility. smaller breaker bar get some good leverage going on here righty tighty you know after you've done quite a bit of work on cars you kind of get the idea of what would be tight enough how many foot pounds you could use a torque wrench which tells you actually how tight something is or you can go by feel. Um, if you're new to this, I re recommend just getting a torque wrench so you know exactly how tight it is. Okay, pretty good, so the bracket is on. Okay, wear sensor bottom inside you may have to finagle this a bit to get it in that's actually going in pretty easy probably because i uh, cleaned it up and uh that one not so easy and if it doesn't slide back and forth easy once it's in place you know if it's got some if it doesn't have give i would take this off the clip and clean it up more and then put the pad back on so yeah this is it's got decent play in this so I'm happy with that okay now we're gonna have to compress the piston okay so what we're gonna do is uh, we can get an old brake pad put the pad there and then use a C-clamp to slowly press that in. Okay, so before you compress the, the piston on the caliper, make sure you undo the cap for the brake fluid reservoir. And uh, as I compress it, that's gonna probably come up a little bit. And put a little rag over here. 
to remind you that all this stuff is off. So I didn't just close the hood and drive away with the cap off and everything. It could be a big mess. Is the C clamp. Now, some people may just put this on one edge of the piston. I wouldn't recommend it because there's a chance you can force this side in at a slight angle and uh, that would suck. Then you would mess up your caliber. So, um, I have a few different C clamps, so hopefully, this one will work. Yeah, it looks like you can just about get some grip there and uh, compress it. I actually cheated a little bit and put the clamp over this bolt. I don't recommend it. I actually was feeling it out to see how easy this went in. And the piston didn't, did go in pretty easy, so there wasn't that much pressure on the bolt. But I do not recommend doing that. You can get a uh, piston compressor tool at your local auto part supplies. And what it is is a plate that goes against this and then uses this as leverage. So as you unscrew it out, it pushes the piston in, okay? Get this ready. Both the caliper bolts are the same. alternative view cam all right if you have a problem with getting the uh, the caliper to swing on remember this is kind of spring loaded but it's, it's spring loaded from the rubber boot so just pull this in and the caliper will further go in into place and you put the uh, the bolt in all right we got those in hand tight let's finish them off Okay, getting snug now. Not bad. Put the bottom on. Make sure you're tightening the caliper bolts and not the bracket bolts. Okay, there we go, good. And uh, yeah, it's gonna make a little bit of noise uh, once this sets and the pads return. Get more quieter. Could be some material that needs to be burned off when we break it in. Now remember that to put in the retaining screws here. This that. That's access to adjust the shoes. You can do that with a screwdriver. There's a star wheel, but I'm not gonna mess with it because it looks kind of rusty in there. Maybe next time. And uh, so we're gonna put the tire back on and rinse and repeat the other side. Yeah, don't forget to, to uh, knock out the adjustment grommet from your old rotor. And stick it in here. Probably. <laughs> there we go. Okay, before I put the tire on, here's a little tip. I'm gonna put some uh, three-in-one oil, some sort of penetrating oil on a rag and then wipe this down. And hopefully this will keep the wheel from corroding onto the hub. This is actually the brake rotor. Let's go. This is coded, but remember, where I think the wheel usually gets stuck on is this, this, this rim. And so make sure you wipe the inside of the tire. Also in here, that's the part that really gives you a problem. I'm even gonna put some more oil on that, finish up doing that.
And if you want, before you lower it, you can put on the handbrake. Helps a little bit. I didn't put it up as a brute force. Let's get in and do some one more click. Just two clicks. Yeah, it's on. Brakes, handbrakes working good. All right. Tighten that crisscross pattern. Not in sequential order, you know, when you're just hand tightening sequential. Not bad. And then do the opposite. Keep doing the opposite as you tighten. final test going around just to make sure you didn't forget not bad tighten okay and the cheesy hubcap make sure it goes over the uh, air stem Voila. All right, well, if this video helped you out, appreciate it. Got any comments, leave below. Uh, click subscribe, got a, lot of, got a lot of cool stuff on LJ's how-to, including uh, doing more stuff on a Kia Soul 2011. Thanks for watching, take care.